Hey, what's going on guys? Tanmaya for Simple Snippets and in today's video tutorial, we are going to take a theoretical overview of what object oriented programming is in Java programming. So this is going to be a quick short video tutorial, which is basically a theoretical video tutorial on the concept of object oriented programming in Java. So with that being said, let's start off. So to better understand what object oriented programming is, the best way is to compare it with the procedural oriented programming. So if you are coming from a C++ background, I'm pretty sure you'll understand this very easily because the concepts are pretty similar to what we did in C++ programming. So starting off with procedural oriented programming. So in procedural oriented programming, there is no concept of objects and classes. Instead, we have more focus given on functions. Now functions basically is a group of statements, which is given a single name so that you can access all those statements using that one single name. So say for example, you want to perform addition of n numbers. You create a function with name of say for example, add or add two numbers. And then you write all those statements inside that function and then call that function n number of times so that you can use it over and over again, which gives you the feature of reusability. But there is an issue with procedural oriented programming is that these functions mostly share global data. That is the data is publicly available and procedural oriented programming is not really very suitable for the real world scenarios or trying to mimic the real world environment. So what do I mean by that? Let's see what object oriented programming is. Now in object oriented programming, the more focus is given on data and how we access that data. So programs are divided into objects. So what are these objects? So these objects are basically derived out of classes. And so these classes are sort of like templates and you probably must have heard of what a template is in general. Basically a template is like a predefined theme, which you directly use right in Excel or in Microsoft Word. You must have had predefined templates, which you directly use, right? So you can make a similar analogy in programming as well. In programming, you can consider a template as a predefined unit, which has some data members and functions clubbed together. And then you can derive user defined data types. That is the objects out of it. So in this case, the functions that operate on the data of an object are tied together in the same data structure. That is that class. So the data is not directly accessible outside that class by outside functions. So this adds a layer of security as well in object oriented programming, and it is more suitable in real world scenarios and tackling real world problems. And we'll understand that when we see an example as well. So right now, just understand that in object oriented programming, more focus is given on classes and objects and data is the most important thing and how we access that data is also important. However, in procedural oriented programming, we have more focus on functions, whereas the data is pretty much globally available. So moving ahead, let's take a visual representation of procedural oriented programming and object oriented programming. As you can see in the procedural part, we have the global data, which is accessible by function one, two, and three. And since it is globally available, function two can access both global data one and two. But if you see the object oriented part, you can see the square blue boxes and each of the box has its own data and functions. The communication is happening via the functions. You can see these arrows, right? So this basically represents that this data for this class is only accessible via its own functions, which means outside function cannot directly access the data to access the data. It has to go via this function itself. So that's where that added layer of security comes into picture. So this was a little bit of visual representation. Let's see the actual definition of object oriented programming. Now object oriented programming is an approach that provides a way of modularizing programs by creating partition memory area for both data and functions that can be used as a template class for creating copies of such modules on demand. Right now, this, this pretty much sounds like a very huge definition with lot of jargons and a little complicated English, but to make it really short object under programming helps us in creating objects out of classes. Now these classes have data members and member functions. And when we create an object of the class, we are basically deriving our own custom data types. So that that's the simpler version of this entire definition. So some basic concepts associated with object oriented programming are classes and objects, data abstraction and encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism, message passing. And we'll be seeing all of them individually in separate video tutorials because each of them are a little big if we try to cover it in this entire one single video. So we'll take theoretical and practical explanations of each of these points in further video tutorials. So don't want to put everything in this one video. This is just a theoretical overview of object oriented programming. So this was a little bit of theoretical overview of object oriented programming. And I know it's a lot of theory and theory going on, but let's try to take a real world scenario and let's try to differentiate between procedural and object oriented programming. 
So if you're coming from C++ background and if you especially have seen my C++ object oriented introduction video, this was the same example that we discussed over here, over there and things are pretty much similar over here as well. So let's assume that you have a car manufacturing company and you want to store data of different cars and their models. So I have mentioned five different data types that or data members that you want to store. So you want to store the company name, you want to store the model name, you want to store the fuel type, mileage and price. So in procedural part, which is in this green box, this is the public static void main I've just written in short form. You'll create five different variables, three arrays and one float and one double, right? Just to store data for one car, right? So let's imagine you want to store data for 10 cars or 20 cars. So that multiplied by five will give you that number of variables. And then this entire program will become very lengthy and it's not really efficient and becomes tedious, right? To manage all those data. And again, it will be globally available. So procedural oriented doesn't seem to be really efficient enough and not really going with this real world scenario. Let's try to see what object oriented programming has to offer. So in this blue box, you can see I have an orange block. Now this box represents the class. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a template. I'm saying class cars. So the name of this class is cars. Inside that I have those five different variables and a function which will display the data of these five different variables. So this is clubbed inside one class and in the main function, what I'm doing is I'm creating an object of this type. So I'll say cars object one. So object one will have these five data members and this member function. Then I create object two. So again, object two will also have its own five data members and its member function. And lastly, I create one more object. So object three also again gets all of these. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm creating one template and then I'm deriving objects out of that template. So this makes this program very much manageable and very much efficient, right? Because you can see just by creating one object, I already get all these five variables inside this object as well as the data member function that op operates on this member member variables. So only display details function of object one will be able to access all the data members inside object one and no other function outside this class can access the data members. So that's where that added layer of security comes into picture. So as you can see, this object oriented programming is more suited to the real world scenario in this case. And there are times when procedural oriented programming is more suited, but in most cases in the real world scenario, object oriented programming is much more suitable for the problem statements as it has many more features, not just these, we have inheritance, we have polymorphism and whatnot. We'll discuss all of them in the further video tutorials. So that's it for this video guys. This was just a very basic theoretical overview of object oriented programming in Java and we'll see practical programs and different topics and different features in detail in the further video tutorials. If you like this video, if you found this helpful, please share it with your friends and give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, make sure you subscribe because there are a lot of video tutorials coming soon on this channel and I'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial. Peace.